Hi friends, I'm so excited to spend some time with you today. Today you'll see I have my paper and my board, so in a bit we're going to draw together. But first, let's talk about what we're celebrating this week. It's Earth Week, which means we're talking about all the things we love about our Earth. And I have a special book that's really dear to my heart that um, we get to share in a moment. But first, I thought we can sing one of the songs we've been singing in our classroom um, that I know all of you know really well. And some of you, even if you're not in our class, you know it too. Let's sing It's a Small World together. Will you help me? Ready? Okay. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small, small world. It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. It's a world of hope and a world of fears. That there's so much that we share that it's time we're aware. It's a small world after all. 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 It's a small, small world. There is just one moon and a golden sun. And a smile means friendship to everyone. Though the mountains are high and the oceans are wide, it's a small world after all. 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 It's a small small world. Thank you for singing with me. That was going to be one of our Earth Day performance songs, huh? So you can sing it with me and you can sing it with your family and your friends and it will be helpful to have a little bit of a smile on your face, won't it? Okay. Well today, like I said, I have a very special book for you because this book is titled The Little House. And the author is Virginia Lee Burton. And The Little House is one of my most favorite childhood books that I read when I was your age, and I would love to read it to you. Now, this book has many happy parts, but it does have a few sad parts. And you might feel like the house is alive and has emotions and feelings, and that's okay. What's special about this book is you're thinking not only about the house, but the world around her and what's happening around her. So as we read, if you feel happy or sad at some points, that's okay. It's okay to feel different ways. Are you ready to read? Okay. The Little House. The first page does not have words, but it tells the story. Can you see what's happening here? She is a happy house. Hmm, things begin to change. Let's see what happens. Once upon a time, there was a little house way out in the country. She was a pretty little house and she was strong and well built. She, the man who had built her so well said, this little house shall never be sold for gold or silver and she will live to see our great, great grandchildren's great, great grandchildren living in her. He wanted it to last a long, long time. Isn't that special? The little house was very happy as she sat on the hill and watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning and the sun set in the evening. Day followed day each one a little different from the one before, but the little house stayed just the same. In the nights, she watched the moon grow from thin new moon to a full moon and back again to a thin old moon. When there was no moon, she watched the stars. 
Way off in the distance, she could see the lights of the city. The little house was curious about the city and wondered what it would be like to live there. Hmm. Time passed quickly for Little House and she watched the countryside slowly change seasons. In spring, the days grew longer and the sun warmer. She waited for the robin to return from the south. Remember robins migrate? So it's returning from the south. She watched the grass turn green. She watched buds on the trees swell and the apple trees burst into blossoms. She watched the children playing in the brook. It's a little bit of water. That looks like a happy house, doesn't it? Hmm. In the long summer days, she sat in the sun and watched the little trees cover themselves with leaves and the white daisies cover the hill. She watched the gardens grow and the apples turn red and ripen. She watched the children swimming in the pool. And in the fall, when the days grew shorter and the nights grew colder, she watched the first frost turn the leaves from bright yellow to orange to red, and the harvest was gathered and apples were picked. She watched the children going back to school. And what comes next? First we had spring, then summer, then fall. Winter, that's right. When the winter nights were long and the days were short, the countryside covered with snow. She watched the children coasting and skating and year followed year. The apple trees grew older and new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city. And now at night, the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. Hmm. One day, the little house was surprised to see a horseless carriage coming down the winding country road. Hmm, so she was built when there were no cars, only carriages that horses pulled. But one day she saw something without a horse pulling it. Pretty soon there were more of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon along came some surveyors who surveyed a line in front of the little house. Surveyor is somebody who looks at the land and measures out different lines of where their property is. And pretty soon along came a steam shovel that dug a road through the hill that was covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road and more trucks came with little stones and more trucks came with tar and sand. And finally, a steamroller came and rolled it all smooth. What were they making? A road. The road was done. They're building a road right next to the little house. Now little house watched the trucks and the automobiles. Those are cars going back and forth to the city gas stations, road stands, small houses, followed the new road. Everyone and everything was moving much faster than before. Hmm, is her world changing? The neighborhood is looking different. More roads were made and the countryside was divided into lots, more houses, bigger houses, apartment houses, tenement houses, schools, stores, garages were spread all over the land and the crowded and they crowded the little house. No one wanted to live in her anymore or take care of her. She couldn't be sold for gold or silver. So she just stayed there and watched. Wow. She did not change all the land around her began to change. Now it was not so quiet and peaceful at night. The lights of the city were bright and very close. The street lights shone all night long. This must be living in the city, thought Little House. 
and didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. Hmm. Pretty soon there were trolley cars going back and forth in front of Little House. They went back and forth all day and even part of the night. Everyone seemed to be very busy and everyone seemed to be in a hurry. She's definitely in the city now, isn't she? Pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth right above the little house. The air was filled with dust and smoke and the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came or summer or fall or winter. It all seemed the same. Hmm. Pretty soon there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house. She couldn't see it, but she could hear it and feel it. People were moving faster and faster no one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried by without a glance. That means they never looked at her anymore. Pretty soon they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses around Little House and started digging even bigger cell cellars, one on each side. The steam's shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other. Pretty soon, they started building up. They built up 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. Do you see her? It's hard to see the little house, isn't it? Now the little house only saw the sun at noon, that's in the middle of the day, and didn't see the moon or stars at night at all because the lights of the city were just too bright. She didn't like living in the city. At night, she used to dream of the country and the field of daisies and the apple trees and dancing in the moonlight. Her world has changed, hasn't it? The little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty. Her windows were broken and her shutters hung crookedly. She looked shabby though she was just as good of a house as ever underneath. No one is taking care of her, so she doesn't have anything to hold up her house to keep it beautiful. Then one fine morning in spring, along came the great, great granddaughter of the man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way, way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees growing all around. Did that used to be this little house? It did. They found out that it was the very same house. So they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked at the little house all over and said, sure, this house is good as ever. She's built so well, so we could probably move her anywhere. So they picked up the little house and put her on some wheels. Traffic was held up for hours as they slowly moved her out of the city. Do you see? Have you ever seen that driving down the highway a big house is on a trailer? Sometimes that happens. At first the little house was quite frightened but after a while she got used to it and rather liked it. They rolled along the big roads and they rolled along little, little ro roads until they were way out in the country. When the little house saw the little green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. They went along and along, but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried the little house here, they tried her there, and finally saw a little hill in the middle of a field. 
the apple trees were growing all around. There, said the great-great-granddaughter, that is just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. A cellar was dug on top of the hill and slowly they moved the house from the road to the hill. The windows and shutters were fixed and once again they painted her lovely shade of pink. As the little house settled down on her new foundation, she smiled happily. See how happy her smile is. Once again, she could watch the sun, the moon, and the stars. And once again, she could watch the spring and summer and fall and winter come and go. And once again, she was lived in and taken care of. That's a happy picture, isn't it? Never again would she be curious about the city. Never again would she want to live there. The stars twinkled above her. The new moon was coming up and it was spring and all was quiet and peaceful in the country. The end. Wasn't that a nice book? Kind of reminds us that the things that are important are how we feel and all the nature around us, doesn't it? Well, I loved this last picture so much where she was moved back to a happy spot. I thought we could draw it together. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay. So today I have something different. We've painted with paints, we've colored with crayons, and now we're going to use pastels to make our little house picture. Are you ready? So our little house is going to have some sunlight, some green grass on the hill, and lots of different pieces um, to the picture, but I'm going to do my best to draw it with you, okay? I'm going to use pastels today, and pastels are something that looks a lot like a crayon, but they are a lot softer. Do you see them? They look like crayons, don't they? They're a lot softer, so when I use them, they're easier to um, move around and smudge. Do you know what smudge means? Smudge is if I drew a line and then I went with my finger and kind of wiped it, it would smear all over. And sometimes that's what I would want. So in our picture, and I'll show you this picture when you draw it if you'd like, I see lots of yellow representing maybe the sunlight all around the house. So I'm going to start just to show you what a pastel looks like and how we can smudge it. So I'm going to hold the top and just do a zigzag motion all the way around one side. And then I'm going to make the rest of the arch on this side. Now, if you have pastels and you're using them to get ready to get dirty, I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to smudge and rub. See how I'm making it a little bit more smeared all around. The sunlight is glowing. And look what happened. I got messy. So we have the beginning sunlight, just like in our picture. And I see that the house is right in the center. So I think I want to start with her. I'll start with her black roof and the shingles. So I have a shorter line on top and a longer line on bottom. And we connect the sides. Do you guys remember what shape that is? Trapezoid, good, trapezoid. And the trapezoid has little arches like that, almost like you're doing a W over and over and over. And those are the shingles. Can you guys say shingles? Shingles. And all, a lot of houses have shingles because that helps the roof stay waterproof. Now this I can do with a pastel because that's the kind of material. If you can't smudge it, that's okay. But I used my finger to smudge the pastels so that the roof was colored in gray. 
If you don't have pastels, you can just color it with a gray pencil or crayon or whatever you have. The next part I'll do real quick is the cute little chimney that's red on top. Just a little square right there. And now I think I'll do the outline of the house. So they said it was pink. I'm going to use my red pastel just for the outline because I don't have the same color pink, but I'm not gonna push as hard. So if you have a pencil or a crayon, you can use the same um, color. You can do pink if you'd like, or you can do red. Now I'm gonna smudge it out a little bit. It's a funny sound, isn't it? And now I'll do the door in the black, a line, an arch around and down. And I'm gonna do a little bit in the middle. And then two windows. And those kind of were like her eyes in the story, weren't they? That was kind of cool how the different parts of her house represented different parts of a face with little shutters on each side. And your house might look different than mine and that's okay. I'm doing it my way and you can do it your way. You can do different colors if you'd like. Now the front has two steps and some stones on either side. So I'm going to do a curve and a curve and then little circles to represent the stones on each side. You can do that too to have the steps and the stones. I'm going to smudge tiny bit to make it more gray. My little house. Now we're going to look at, let's see, let's look at the outline of the green hill with the grass that she's on. So I'm going to do a circle curve there and a circle curve there. Two curves on each side. And now I'm going to get some brown to work on the trees. And I don't know if I'll do the same amount of trees that sh the little house has. I might just do a couple. And I'm just doing that by coloring in brown there. And then maybe one more down here. And you guys can put your trees wherever you want. And then do you see the beautiful apple blossoms that are pink? I'm going to use my pink, my light pink, and do swirls to represent the blossoms. Can you do swirls, little spirals? All around, kind of like you're doing curly hair on the top of each tree. Isn't that pretty fun? And then I'm going to smudge, but if you don't have pastels, you don't have to worry about this part. I'm just gonna smudge it to soften it up a little bit to make it a little lighter of a pink. Awesome. Okay, I have my trees. Shall we color in the green grass? That sound good? So I'm going to do kind of, remember we talked about shading? I'm going to do some light shading around the tree, around the house, around the trunks. So there's a little bit of green and I see there's green here and yellow and green. I'm just going to mix some yellow in and you can do that too. Just where I feel like the yellow should go. That's kind of representing the sunlight. And then I'm gonna get my smudging finger and smudge all the yellow and green together so that the hill has all the color around. What do we think? Now I waited to do the second arch of the sun just to see how big my picture was going to be. Now that I know, I'm going to do my zigzags for my second sunlight arch. Zigzag, 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 zigzag. Very good, I'm gonna get my, let's see, my blending finger. I think I'll use my pinky because I don't wanna mix my colors. Blend, blend, blend. That looks like a pretty happy house, doesn't it? And you can add different things to yours, but I think I'm happy with mine. Are you happy with yours? Good.
the little house. She looks very happy on her hill, doesn't she? Thanks so much for reading one of my favorite books with me and for drawing and experimenting with some new different colors. I'll see you next time, friends. Take care.